And now, uh, Chine Edu Azodo, who is the Chief Growth Officer and Co-Founder of uh, Max NG, uh, joins me now in the studio to discuss this new development. First of all, what's your reaction when this news broke? Um, so, it was interesting to find out about this news from the media rather than potentially from the government. Um, I think every responsible government that cares about the impact of its decisions and its laws on people um, usually would engage stakeholders. I think the key thing that the way this was broken essentially shows that there's little value for the democratic process and um, what's, how this affects our people mm -hmm. and you know what it, makes, what, what it does for them. I mean, consider that laws like this put in Lagos, 800,000 people at risk, right, in terms of Okada transport drivers alone, right? Um, and not to think about the people who leverage those services. You see, if there wasn't a problem today with the way transportation happens in Lagos, um, motorcycles wouldn't be there solving that problem, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so it's, yeah, that was surprising. All right, now the government, of course, in that um, statement which we heard and which we watched mm -hmm. said they're going to provide alternative without mentioning what they are and without giving specifics. Right, now what are your expectations as someone who, you know, who is in this business, as I do know? So there are no practical alternatives. Um, I mean, think about places like Apapa, Lagos Island, Lagos Mainland, um, Lekki Fees, one bunch of places. There are no real alternatives, right? Mm -hmm. um, the alternatives that we've heard them moot are buses. Um, the problem is that buses don't solve the problem. For buses to operate, you must have big roads. We don't have big roads. Lagos is a poor city, right, I mean, for being factual, right? Uh, we don't have the capacity and the money to continue to spend on building the infrastructure that will make the city the city of buses, quote unquote, right? Um, and then when you when you have policy somersault like this, um, it also limits, it scares potential investors into coming to places like Lagos because they, it shows that there's, there's you know, a lot of inconsistency and some confusion, and that's very risky for people to actually put their money into. So mm -hmm. you, you will struggle to see private people want to make the kind of investment in building out infrastructure that could make buses or trains work today. All right, um, the government, again, following that statement, which we heard by Omotosho there, says it's, this banning is largely blamed on accident and road crashes, you of know, course. from 2016, according to the statements, to 2019, three, about three, four years now. They've recorded over 10,000 uh, accidents. Those are the ones that are recorded. Of course, there are right. others that are not accounted for. Now, do you think that this is the solution yet to the problem? I mean, absolutely not, right? When you, when you take things, as a singular and say, oh, because of accidents happening, we're going to ban Okadas, right? You don't take into, fact the, into account the fact that the number one killer of young people in Nigeria and across most of Saharan Africa today is road transport accidents. Are you then going to ban cars and trucks and buses and everything else on the road because that is what is the number one killer of young people? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Common sense prevails and says that you should look at the problem and then try to solve, right? What we're seeing, so when you say 10,000 accidents between 2016 and 2019, and say over 10,000, over 10,000, oh, Okadas have caused that. How many have been caused by cars, right? Now, even beyond that, let's look at, um, you know, regulated companies like Max, for example. What have we done? What are, what, are the, what are the numbers? We've had zero fatality since operation. We've been operation, operating for almost five years today. We have over 2,000 drivers on our platform working, right, and making more than, uh, on average, about 200,000 naira a month take home for their families, right? And after about a year to a year and a half, they now own their own motorcycles through a lease to own model. And at, that, at the end of that period, their income also grows 40% because they're no longer repaying um, loans that they've taken to pay for these vehicles. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of... There's a lot of, you know, things that are not being taken into account. We're just throwing out random numbers, or we're just throwing out numbers, however factual they are, and not taking into account context. So yes, as an industry, there have been ten thousand Okada accidents in the last. No, I mean, well, they didn't say just years. Okada. No, accidents. obviously, no, no, no. Well, I mean, so the ten thousand number is targeted specifically at Okada accidents. So there've been ten thousand Okada accidents. Um, from 2016 to 2019. 2019. Okay, fantastic, right? How many how many accidents have companies like Max registered, right? What about things like we use, for example, what about what are we doing to ensure things like that don't happen? So, for example, we use predictive analytics, which is quite interesting mathematics and science, to essentially, in real time, tell how risky a driver is on the road mm -hmm. and make a decision to pull him off 
or not to pull him off. And what that does is that it minimizes risk of accidents on our platform. Where there's you know, a potential fender bender or anything like that, and we've asked drivers to come in and they don't want to come in, we actually have a response team that goes in and actually brings those drivers in and forces them in. And the key thing we want to be able to do is to find out what the issues are and how we can help solve them. Mm -hmm. They've also talked about safety and security, and security being like, oh, you know, we have a lot of immigrants coming into the city that are putting us at risk and all sorts. Every driver who comes into our platform is fully registered and background checked. Now, let's and they talk. must come in guarantors. Okay, so I, I appreciate that you're making all of this explanation and letting us see this other side that we're not seeing. However, 10 bridges um, and um, 15 highways, Correct. 15 local government areas, 10 highways and 40 bridges are affected, you know, going to be affected by this ban, which is just four days away. Yeah. And I know certainly these are areas that your own uh, champions, group, champions as you like to call yes, it, ply, they ply those routes. What is the impact for you, first of all, as a business owner, a business, business organization, and as an employer of labor? What impact does Fantastic this have? Fantastic question. This is a war on poor people, right? Because let's look at it. These bridges and things we're talking about, highways, it's typically people who live in farther communities who have to commit every day to work, right? And want to be able to get more rest in the morning and be more productive at work, correct? So they are going to get on motorcycles to get them through those highways and bridges. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, people have cars, or you know, people who are making decisions, a lot of them, you know, drive around in comfortable air-conditioned cars, right? They assume that you know, the poor man should go and do the same thing, and that's that's there's something fundamentally, you know, inconsiderate of the Lagos people about uh, in that sense. I mean, Lagos people have voted these people in, and Lagos people have stepped up and said that they will use these services because it solves a fundamental problem for them. So banning it and essentially making them lose access to, you know, what helps them improve productivity during the day because they're not going to sit in traffic doesn't make sense. I mean, how can you ban Okada and Keke in a place like Apapa? Apapa roads are not motorable. That's correct. Right? So it, it makes absolutely no sense. And then when you even think about it from the legal and regulation, regulatory standpoint, we've referenced in the ban, they've referenced um, the 2018 Transport Reform Law of Lagos, mm -hmm. right? Section 15 of the Lagos State Transport Sector Reform Law clearly states, and I read, subject to the provision of Section 46 of this law, motorcycles above 200 cc's are exempted from the restriction on the use of motorcycles on the state highways. So even by the Lagos State law, this ban is illegal. Right? Mm -hmm. What the ban is, is a ban on vehicles and motorcycles below 200 cc engine capacity. Okay. So, the experience and what we're seeing is that technically these bans shouldn't affect us, right? But we have to make sure that, you know, law enforcement and the people who are going to enforce these bans mm. are properly educated on what the impact is. Mm -hmm. Now, before I let you go, Mr. Thank Azodo, you. Uh, you. what's your stand as an organization on this ban? We just have four days. By the 1st of February, which is on Saturday, uh, putting it in perspective, this will be happening. What's your stand I as mean, an organization? Look, Lagos is the center of excellence, right? And I believe in a greater Lagos. And we believe as an organization in a greater Lagos. And we believe that this has, that, you know, Lagos, you know, people come to Lagos because Lagos has the capacity to transform lives. Lagos has had that capacity, not because of a restrictive, destructive government, but because of a government that is forward thinking and open to the future. Mm -hmm. When you look at cities, in, other, in Asia, look at places like, you know, Jakarta, right? Countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, Bangladesh. You will see that those countries have just as high population or higher population than Nigeria and cities that are denser than Lagos. And a key solution they have developed that has worked and is scaling is motorcycle taxis. And they've worked with organizations like Gojek and Grab to make that happen, right? A forward-thinking Lagos is a Lagos that sees the future, sees the problems and figures out solutions. That means people like us who are actually bringing solutions to this problem, going out, working with investors, bringing FDI into the country, and employing people. I mean, we're employing 2,200 people, right? Not including office staff. Mm -hmm. And the average driver supports seven people. We've also created over 70,000 indirect jobs over the last four and a half years, right? So the ban is an affront to the people of Lagos, mm -hmm. right? It is a fight against poverty. Right? It is destruction of poor people because the people who are at most at risk are poor people. And you see, when you expose them and treat them this way, what options do they have left? 
You can't say you want safety and security and then take bread from somebody's mouth. Mr. What exactly are they going to do? We would like to keep you here, but we are out of time. So thank I must say thank much. you very much for thank coming. You. And we've been speaking with the Chief um, Growth Officer of Max and Chinedu Azudo. Denise will continue after the short break. We'll be back in a moment.